Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Today, I'm showing you how you can create this typographic poster for completely free inside of a free app called Vectinator that you can use on your iPad, your iPhone, and your iMac. This video is brought to you by Vectinator. So the first thing you want to do is create a new document. We're gonna go here and we're gonna actually change the document size from landscape to portrait like this. And I'm gonna choose A4 as this is my most normal size of paper. The next thing we want to do is go ahead and go to the settings toggle up here and make sure we turn off rulers and have your grid at perpendicular with a grid spacing of 10 millimeters. This will give us a nice grid to work with in our typographic poster. The next step, I'm gonna go ahead to my layers and I'm gonna rename this one as background and it should just pop up at the bottom here. There we go. And this is my background layer. What we're going to do is create a color by just selecting the rectangle tool. We're gonna to go from the top here and sort of come all the way down and then just fit this sort of in the canvas. Go to style and we're gonna choose a nice red. So I'm gonna choose like a red like this. Go back to your layers and go ahead and toggle that to lock. Now when you lock it, you'll notice that you can't actually move it. You can't select it, which is a good thing. And that's what we want. Now you might not be able to see very well, but there are actual grid lines here. And this is what's gonna help me guide my work and keep everything consistent. And because we're creating a relatively simple poster today, it's relatively effective as well. We're gonna be using these grid lines to keep everything consistent. The next thing we're going to do is create some text. What we need to do is create a new layer. So we're just gonna go ahead and press new layer up here. This is gonna be our text layer. What we're going to do is gonna use the type tool here and we're gonna drag out like so, relatively large. And I'm gonna, with full caps, right, stay. And then I'm gonna get rid of my rulers and I'm gonna select this. You might not be able to see it. So we're gonna go up to the style and change this to white. I'm even gonna to go to the style as well and show you the sizing and the tracking and the kerning. So I'm gonna bring the tracking and the kerning where I need it to be. And we can edit this later if we need to, but this is where I want to be. I want to have it sort of here. Now I'm using a font called Poppins and it's Poppins Bold. And what you can do to get a font that you like is in Vectinator, you can actually import them. Go to the settings tab when you're first in Vectinator and press font library, and you can download anything from your iCloud into here as a font. Now this type, I wanna actually change it to extra bold because this is like the main thing that we want people to see. Now the cool thing about Vectinator is that we can actually duplicate this all the way down. Go to this tab here and you'll see this little button. When you press that and it's highlighted, whenever you move this, it's gonna create another copy. So what we're gonna do is gonna move it down and then put our finger on the screen, which will constrain the move. And then where we go, we've got that. Then what we wanna do is double click, go ahead, go to the start and write home, keeping it in caps as well. And you can write anything or create anything like this. Now, when you get this sort of situation happening here, it means that your text box is a bit too small. So go ahead and just bring it out ever so slightly. We're gonna repeat the process by pressing this button, dragging this down, which duplicates it. And then we're gonna go ahead, turn it off. And I'm gonna make this a bit smaller. And we're gonna do that later actually, because we don't need it to be that tall. We're gonna write here, save in full caps again. Everything's gonna be in full cap here. But what we want to do is make this smaller. But when we try to make it smaller, it's gonna do all the strange things that we don't want it to do. So instead of that, we're gonna to go to the format bit up here for the stylizing, let's bring the size down. And what we can actually do as well, because now we've got a huge text box, we can press this button, fit bounds to text size, which will fit them in so you don't have to worry about hitting it too much. And what we're going to do is actually take this text box here and move it all the way to the edge so I can double click in and press save lives. And again, what I'm going to do is increase the tracking of this. I like to do this quite a lot so we can actually have a good amount of distance and harmony with it. But I'm gonna keep it as extra bold. Now something that I like to do is have a bit more control. So I don't want this to be editable type anymore. So I'm gonna select this and I'm going to copy this. I'm gonna to go to my layers panel over here and we're going to go ahead and lock this layer. I'm gonna create a new layer 
and I'm going to actually hide that first layer too. I'm going to go ahead and paste that old work into the new layer and the reason for this is quite simple. We don't want to get rid of it. We want to have editable text. We don't want to ever destroy what we've created and because we're going to be making it into an actual shape object not a text object we're copying it back in. What we then want to do is make sure we select stay and we're going to go ahead and find something called create outlines from text under the path options and we're going to do this for all of them. Now when we do that you'll see that they're all singular shapes and we don't really want that. We want to be able to still transform them all the way when we select them. So we want to go ahead and select the whole word. And when we do that, we go up to the arrange option, press group. And we're going to do this for all of these group. And for lives, I'm going to do as well, the save, I'm going to do it. And it's going to group those objects. For lives, I'm going to move out here ever so slightly like so. Then I'm going to go ahead and group all of them together as well. So now whenever we move them, we've got these editable shapes that we can edit, but also move together. Now, something that I did like to do and wanted to do as part of the poster is go ahead and create a house. And to create the home or the house, we're gonna go ahead and create another square down here. And I'm gonna create this rectangle using the rectangle tool, holding my finger there, and that'll constrain the angle. And we can create this quite small. It doesn't need to be huge. Then we wanna go to the node tool. What this does is you can add anchor points in like I've just done there. And we're gonna drag this anchor point up, holding with our middle finger here or our index finger. Now that home looks a bit strange. So we're gonna highlight these two as well and bring this up until we get something that looks like a cartoon house, something like this. Now, something that I like to do as well is go ahead and create some windows and a door to give the illusion of a house. And also, so it has that O feeling, even though it is a square. So go ahead to your rectangle tool again, and we're gonna go ahead and create another square, but we wanna keep it kind of symmetrical here. We're gonna do it out here actually, so we can get a good square shape. We're gonna change the fill to the actual red, because we don't wanna get rid of it just yet, and we wanna group them all together. So we're gonna drag this in over here as a window, see if it fits, and if it does fit and you like it, you can use the grids to actually create this a bit better if you like. Once you got that first window there, a little trick is if you highlight it, press this copy move button and move it like so, it will create a copy for you. I'm gonna do it all the way down here as well. Turn it off. We're then gonna go ahead and make sure we have a door as well. And that kind of looks like a very rough looking house. You can spend as much time on this object or any objects in your posters as you want. And then I'm gonna go ahead and highlight all of those shapes there. Go up to arrange and press group. And they are all now grouped together. On the home part, I wanna get rid of this O. So select home, go ahead to the arrange part and press ungroup, select the O, and then we're gonna press delete. We're gonna drag this shape up here and scale it down, making sure we constrain the angles. And we want to put it slightly like so. So it gives the illusion of home as well. You could put this on the H or on any sort of letter here, but I kind of like to use the first letter of this to make sure people understand what's going on and what's being read. So now we've got this, it looks relatively good, but what we want to do is grid it up a bit better. The grid's there for a reason. So what we can do is go ahead and make sure that we align to the grid. Now the S has got an overbearing, so that means that the S corner can come away from the grid ever so slightly to give the illusion that it's bang on the grid. The home can actually come directly onto the grid size. The same with save lives. The S needs to come and basically oversight ever so slightly to give the illusion. And now as you can see, it looks like everything is on the same side. And if it doesn't, just move the S slightly back and see what you get with that. And I kind of like this. I'm just gonna move the home up ever so slightly and the save lives slightly. If you want to, you can use this button at the bottom to move things up very precisely. Now the next part of this is basically more information. But what you can do is if you select an object, it will remember the color that is on the object itself. And we can go ahead and create a divider line. These are really useful for like dividing information. But what we want to do is make sure it fits to the grid of where things start and end. That's the great thing about grids. Go ahead and select it. If it's a bit too thick, you can just bring it in ever so slightly. 
Now for the other information that we want to input into here, it's important that we have some contrast. So make sure you're zooming in and out to make sure that everything is working correctly and everything is in the right sort of space and area. And we can go ahead and change this later. We just want to get all what's known as the components out first. So we get all the information out on this poster. So what I want to do is put some other bits of information in. And what I want to write is basically clean hands, help others and be kind as some sort of nice thing that we can do. So I'm going to go ahead to my text tool again. I'm just going to create a text box again in full caps. I'm just going to write clean hands. Now the difference between this and what we've been doing before is that we need to make sure that there is contrast. So we do this by skipping a weight in the typography. So by that you have a font which is Poppins and the type of font or the type or the weight is different. So we've got extra bold, black or bold. So I'm going to go down to bold and that's going to, you can see the difference there. It's going to keep it ever so slightly thinner. So everyone knows when they're looking at it, subsidiary information, your brain's not been overloaded with loads of bold text. And from here, I'm going to go ahead and decrease the size. So the size is going to be decreased just a little bit like so. And we're going to increase the tracking as well. So we can use some of that space that we've got down here. Now, again, all we need to do is basically do what we did before. We go ahead, press this little copy move button. And then if we drag, put our finger down, it will constrain. And we're going to do this twice. And obviously you can keep it like this if you want to keep the same thing written, but you can go ahead and easily change it by unticking this. So you don't copy and move anything anymore. Go ahead and click here, then write anything else that you want. And from here, we can go ahead and increase the kerning. So it's kind of the same, or shall I say increase the tracking? So it's similar to the other ones. And we just do it by selecting it and moving it. And again, something that I want to do is go ahead and select all of these and fit bounds to text size. And that will automatically make it easier for us to do. Now, another way of creating contrast inside of a poster such as this is not only changing the weight of a typeface, but actually adding a negative and a negative shape behind a positive one is really interesting and it highlights things very well. So what I'm going to do is in my selection tool, I'm gonna to move a be kind down and then I'm gonna move help others down a bit holding so it keeps in the same angle. I'm then gonna go ahead and click away and use another square here. And now the reason for this is we're gonna draw a square around help others and then help others will be the background color. So it gives that different flair, gives that bit of like bordering off the thing that we're trying to create. So go ahead and create the square and we can move this later. So go ahead and move up here make sure it fits this whole area here and it fits within the grid lines that we've got. Now you can't really see much there because obviously it's the same color as the text and it's above the text in the layering system. So first off, go ahead to arrange and send that to the back. Secondly, we're gonna go ahead and click the typeface. And we're also gonna go ahead and fill it with the red. And to make sure it's the right red that we're using, go ahead and click this little eyedropper tool, go ahead and change the color to the red, and then we can move it in like so. And what we can do with this one here is you can lock it if you want to, or what I prefer to do is just group them together to make it easier. Something that a lot of you may not know is that you can use your mobile phone for Vectinator as well, which is insanely cool. You've got everything that you can do on your actual iPad, you can do it on your phone. And I've made sure in this tutorial, you can do all of this inside of your phone. You don't need a pen tool because it's a very easy style of thing to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and move all of these. So just let them move them up ever so slightly. Zoom in, zoom out, you know, just make these minor little changes that I want to make. We can even create new shapes if we wanted to throughout this. So I want to make sure this is all justified to the left and fits within the grid that I've created. And there you go. You can sort of start to see that you can finish it off. Within the mobile app, you even have like the pen tool, which is really interesting and fun to use. Inside of a vector app that's all on your phone, which to be fair is unbelievable that we have this. Now with the help of this one down here, I can go ahead and ungroup it if I want to, but I kind of like it the way it is. So guys, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. This video was actually brought to you by Vectinator, the app that you're seeing now. It's a completely 
free app to download and to use. So if you want to do some design work like this on the fly, on your phone, maybe when you're coming home from university, or maybe you just like to like, you know, use small devices to create cool content, then go ahead and press the link down below in the description to learn more about Vectonator, which you can use on your iMac, your MacBook, your iPad, and your iPhone. Who doesn't want to try this free app? Make sure you press that big fat red subscribe button down below so you never miss out on another video. Turning on post notifications and I'll see you guys in the next video. See you soon. Goodbye.